everyone. We just need our slides back up. Perfect. So thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. The whole triple boarded thing still makes me go, what the heck am I doing? Like, why did I do that, right? Um, my name is Michelle Thompson, as he said. I am here along with, I, I could not be doing this alone. I have a team of people who I work with. So um, Tess Monks is actually at the Phipps Conservatory Kitchen and she'll be raising her hands and join, you know, she's going to be doing the cooking from the Phipps Kitchen. Um, I have Sarah, Dr. Sarah Sierra here, who is running the slides, who has helped me to create um, a, a beautiful day for you that is very interactive. So um, this, there will be times that we're talking about a lot of heavy science. And the reason is it's because we believe in evidence-based medicine and that's important. So I wanna make sure that you know that this is coming from a place of science and not a woo-woo, right? But there's also gonna be a lot of fun things that are going to be happening. So thank you, Dr. Sarah Sierra for um, all the work that you've done, uh, as well as Barry and Lindsay for inviting me to be here. And I saw um, Sarah English pop on. If you scroll through your screens, you'll be able to find her. She's been a key um, component in my Dr. Yum project, which is for kids and also some of the community teaching work in the kitchens that I have done. Um, I have Dana Messmore, if you wanna look for her in your you know, big panel. I think we've got 68 people in the room right now. Um, Dana is my dietitian who's been with me for two years. She's an integrative dietitian and she's wonderful. Her and Sarah and I will be doing the nutrition piece at the end. So there is some nutrition in this right now, um, but there's going to be a heavier nutrition component in the end. This is more of an interactive piece with some, you know, with some science, but we want to make sure that you try some things and have some fun with this. Um, I also want to let you know that I am a resource to you. My, my goal in this world really is to share everything that is in my head and give it to you. So anything that I have, I'm happy to um, share. Um, if you want to send me email, uh, reach out to me, however, any way, shape or form, um, I'm happy to interact and help you on your journey in medicine and how you can implement these different things of lifestyle, um, integrative culinary medicine, food as medicine into your work. So with that, we'll get started. This is plant-based nutrition, moving medicine forward in nutrition in an interactive um, prescription is a physician's kitchen. So next slide, please. So the objectives, cook well, eat well, be well personally and professionally. Next slide, please. And we can just pass that, that's just my. So I just wanna give you a little bit of a background. In 1992 actually was when I changed my own diet and lifestyle. Uh, I have you know, changed every single day. It's a journey and I want to start by saying that you are on a journey as well and there's no one right prescription that says that it's for you. Just like we cannot share eyeglasses, we all will have a very specific um, diet that, and I say diet loosely because I don't like that word, but there's really no other word, food program, I guess you could say, that suits you. So I, I want to um, you to enter into this journey today knowing that you are on a path and just be open-minded and listen to your body. You are your own best healer. That's what I teach my patients. I really want you to, um, to find the tools that work for you and ask yourself and become aware of what feels good. So again, I changed my diet in 1992. Um, my son is 29 years old. I raised a child giving him the option to eat whatever he chose. And um, he and my husband both have tended to land being more plant forward and kind of more Mediterranean. Um, I personally don't eat meat and haven't since 1992, but that's my choice. And again, I don't believe in food judging, food shaming, any of those things. They're all very important to me that we enter into this space and that we create a safe space for all. My integrative background began in 1998. I ran a massage therapy school in Erie, Pennsylvania while I was in medical school. And that's where I really learned um, body work and you know, some of the Ayurvedic type of stuff and energy work and therapeutic touch, things like that. Um, yes, I graduated from LECOM, went to UPMC Mercy, and then I moved back to my hometown. That's why I'm in UPMC Horizon, Jamison area. I was born and raised in Sharon, PA. And I started teaching um, in the community in 2006, talking about reversing diabetes with diet, exercise, and lifestyle changes. Back then, it was kind of crazy. Everybody thought I was out of my mind. Um, maybe they still do, but that's okay. I actually really um, want to empower patients to be in control of their fork and to try to see what medicine they truly need and what they can fix with their 
their plate and their food choices. Um, along that path, in 2011, the movie Forks Over Knives came out and I trained under Dr. Esselstyn at the Cleveland Clinic in the um, you know, food as medicine program. I added the dietitian into my practice in 2016 and I've had a dietitian by my side ever since. It's wonderful. I encourage you to try to utilize that as a resource as it's very valuable. I used to do all the work myself and now I really don't have to do as much of that because I have her to, to help me. Um, community events started in 2016. I was unable to get all the patients into my practice, so I really wanted to see how could I reach the public at large and see instead of 20 patients a day, a, a greater amount. And not only they didn't have to be my patients, they could just be the community. And I started teaching free programs for UPMC and um, people got Take a Healthy Step credit points for coming out and being part of my programs and they learned all different types of integrative modalities. Uh, we had upwards of 140 people in the spaces and I was doing monthly programs that started in the Shenango Valley at Horizon and then uh, moved into Jameson. That all stopped in COVID, um, but we are doing online programs and I have a website that you can check out, bewelltherapies.org, where a lot of my programs are listed and I have a Facebook page that's Dr. Michelle Thompson and a lot of things are recorded. Uh, created a program called Shop with a Doc, so you can actually, uh, and that's on my YouTube channel, so you can go shopping with me and one of my dietitians, um, who's not with me by my side on a daily basis anymore, but in, she is in some of the teaching kitchens. Uh, Lena, she and I went to Aldi and we taught people how to shop healthy and affordably, and that's available to, for you to look at as well as share with your patients. Um, and then I started out into the physician kitchen in 2017, really just teaching this to, the, to my colleagues and, and giving them food to try so that they could see that the food could taste good and also be healthy. I uh, started doing some nutrigenomics, pharmacogenomics, mind-body medicine, culinary medicine, yoga medicine um, in 2018 and really been rolling that into my practice. So in 2020, when COVID hit, we started really doing some of this work more tele, tele you know, across the world in Zoom. And um, really it, it has spread across the US, which has been exciting. I actually have somebody that maybe they'll put in the chat had reached out to me from the Philippines that wanted to participate in this Zoom. So we do have people from around the world, which is very exciting to me. Next slide, please. Here's a picture of one of my community teaching kitchens. So what happened is I partnered with Gino West, and I'm not sure if he's in the space. He is actually a local person who um, has a kitchen where he delivers healthy food to people. We've been able to, it's affordable as well. It's $40 for five meals. And the patients, I actually encourage them to try five meals for $40. And we've been able to get patients with A1Cs of 13 down to five and off of three or four medications by working together. So he does have uh, as well Pittsburgh delivery service. So I just wanna share that. He will be with me tonight in the teaching kitchen in um, through FIPS when we're doing the cooking for health and physician wellness. But last year in January, we did, actually it was two years ago, we did a community kitchen and we had 50 people in the kitchen on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And you know this was wonderful, but it was also exhausting for me because I'm still seeing patients. So um, we then took this model of the 50 people a week and we rolled it into the next slide, please. Can we go to the next slide, please? Um, oh, well, this is Dr. Yum. So sorry, I, I'll, I'll show you uh, the pop-up kitchen in a minute. But Dr. Yum Project is a grant program that I got. And I'm sharing all these with you because I want to inspire you to look for money to help you on your mission to change, you know, and be able to help your patients. So we got a grant and we have 10 programs of teaching kids in preschool and their families. And it is wonderful. So I'm going to have you go to the next slide, please. This was through the Buell Regional Health Foundation. Look at all these happy faces and all this colorful food that they're eating. So they're learning to eat healthy and put, um, you know, put nutrients in their body instead of, you know, just eating bland food or chicken nuggets and french fries. They're actually learning the health benefits of, you know, the phytonutrients and phytochemicals and all the eating the colors of the rainbow. Next slide, please. So plant-based, Ohio plant-based, Pennsylvania again came out of that grant program. Next slide, please. 
the hospitalists. And this was uh, at the Gaynor Teaching uh, School, cooking school. And um, I ventured on this mission really to try to help the hospitalists when they are in front of the patient in a critical case of, you know, a heart attack or a stroke. And how can we reach the patient at that teaching? The, the best teaching moment is when the person is looking death in the face, right? They almost died of a heart attack. They almost died of a stroke. Well, it starts with a hospitalist. So you can do this on the inpatient service as well. And you actually can consult a dietitian to come in and talk to your patients about a whole food plant-based diet. Next slide, please. And again, it's not about um, telling people that they have to be vegan, they have to be vegetarian, they have to be, you know, a certain label. It's about moving things forward through healthy food, plant-based food, plant-based nutrition. This is uh, one of my favorite things to do. I love being in the kitchen. This is my um, uh, the residency program here at UPMC Horizon, and this is our journal club. So I would like to, you know, help you guys get the grant that you can get to um, take your journal club into the kitchen when it's safe for us to all go back in. But this is medical students, interns, residents, and attendings all together cooking, having so much fun. And so it's not just the piece of learning, the, the journal articles and the cooking, but also the camaraderie, which we're going to see is very important. Next slide, please. This is when we're in FIPS and it's amazing in there and we can hold 30 people and we can really do a lot of fun, fun things in teaching. Um, Tess is there today and that's where she's going to be cooking from, but instead we're all in our houses and we're doing this from wherever, but we're making it work. So next slide, please. Chef Anthony, he's also one of the, you know, you may know him. He's one of the local celebrity chefs who works with us. He's out right now. He had a baby. So I just wanted to honor him in this slide. Next, next slide, please. And my dietitians, Dana and Lena, who stand by my side and help to teach me. And part of this is, go ahead, next slide, please, is that I don't know it all. And we work together and collaborate as a team. I've learned so much by having dietitians by my side. And I encourage you to just be open-minded and listen. We may not always agree with them, but we, we talk about, you know, what are the disagreements that we have with some of the studies that come out? Because we all hear about data that may not be something that we are all in agreement on. Here's a picture of my pop-up teaching kitchen. So this was a teaching kitchen that cost me about $400. And again, a grant program that I got so it didn't come out of my pocket. Uh, and it has everything you need to take it in a suitcase to wherever you would like to go. And next slide, please. This is the contents of the teaching kitchen and it can go, we've used, so my model that was once a week, 50 people rolled into a daily model in January of last year. And we had 50 to 100 people that we were hitting daily for the whole month of January. January is the month that all health breaks loose, right? Because everybody wants to be healthy. They go on their New Year's resolution. And I really wanted to make sure that, again, you reach them at that teachable moment and they're ready, right? So January is always my month to really just hit it hard and go wherever I think um, we could go. I did not go to all these places, but what I did was, again, collaborate. Next slide, please. So what I did is any person in the community can look at this daily dozen. This is by Dr. Michael Greger. These are the 12 healthy things that you should do in your day. And I talked to the person that's going to run the teaching kitchen, the pop-up teaching kitchen. It went to doctor's offices. It went to homes for intellectually disabled people. It went to churches. It went to daycares. It went to schools. It went to um, athletic programs. It went, it went everywhere. It was amazing to me. And then people that weren't local decided they wanted to pop up and do it from their homes in Alaska, North Carolina, Washington, DC, Virginia. And really it was, they had to run the recipe by me was all. And I had to make sure that it was plant forward. And I choose not to use oil in my teaching kitchen. We could talk about that. That's a whole other um, something to talk about, but really I wanted them to talk about the 12 healthy things that we should be teaching people to do in their day. A lot of this is not about exclusions. It's about what you can have. We don't want to take things away from people. When we take things away from people, they feel like you can't have, you know, you can't have it. So then they want it more. We want to say, you can have all this. And we show them this. So again, partner with people and get this out there. Next slide, please. So with that, we're going to implement a little bit of mind body medicine. We're going to take a deep breath in together. I invite you if you're not driving or somewhere where you're safe, if you would like to close your eyes and take a deep breath in through your nose and let it out through your mouth. Next 
And again, this time as you take a deep breath in, saying soft. And letting it out, saying belly. This is an example of a concentrative meditation, soft belly breathing. And the next one I'm going to let you do on your own, breathing in. And breathing out. And when you feel ready, opening your eyes and coming back to this virtual space. And that was just as much for me as it is for you. So let us be mindful and not have our minds full. Next slide, please. So microdosing mindfulness is something that you can do every day, every hour. I have an alarm set on my phone and we, it just reminds me to actually um, tap in and what am I, what am I thankful for? What am I, um, I, I find something beautiful around me. You can apply it to cooking. You can apply it to mindful eating, which we're going to do today. You can apply it to your patient care. Are you truly there with your patient? And are you utilizing this in your own self-care? Um, I have a bracelet on my wrist and I actually did a study with um, UC Berkeley during the beginning of the pandemic. And they have a website called Microdosing Mindfulness. And they give you a bracelet that you put on you so that you look down in the day and you remember, oh, I should look at something and find a moment of awe. And we will talk about that a little bit later as well. Next slide, please. This is all based on lifestyle medicine. So we look at the six tenets of lifestyle medicine at UPMC. We're very excited to be uh, starting a lifestyle medicine program so that we could teach more of this and get more of our attendings certified in lifestyle medicine. Uh, the basis of it is to eat plants, keep moving, sleep well, be present, stay calm, and love people. Um, and I will share with you, um, I try all of these things. My biggest struggle probably is stress management, which I'm always working on, which is why I have the alarms on my phone, and sleep. So I recently, in addition to my stuff, uh, added an aura ring. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a, a ring that tracks your sleep that looks at your REM, looks at deep sleep, looks at intermission, you know, intermittent sleep patterns, looks at your oxygen, also looks at your heart rate variability. We've found over time that all these things are important. We're going to touch on all these different things today. So next slide, please. So we need lifestyle medicine more than ever. And unhealthy behaviors actually are at the root of a global burden of non-communicable disease and account for about 63% of all deaths. So poor diet is actually the leading cause of poor health in the US and the cause of more than half a million deaths per year. And only 5% of the adult population of the United States practice all the positive lifestyle measures known to sig significantly reduce the risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Next slide, please. Lifestyle modifications can change everything. Unhealthy diets, sedentary lifestyle, high stress, medications cause microbiome dys dysbiosis, oxidative stress, cellular injury, which then further leads to chronic inflammation, things like diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, cancer, depression, and anxiety. In the Lifestyle Medicine Insider in April 2020, we found the uh, equip with health professionals with effective nutritional interventions and better nutrition knowledge, diet-related diseases being the number one cause of poor health in America, nutrition should be among the top priority in our healthcare system. Next slide, please. So it's time for change. 60% of our patients actually believe that we're experts in nutrition, whereas 14% of physicians actually feel comfortable giving nutrition advice. So historically, inadequate nutrition knowledge in medical training, we have seen through the Lancet, we don't get enough nutrition training, which is why we're doing this program. And a survey of residents, fellows, and practicing physicians probing specific nutrition knowledge have found that correct responses are only ranging from 50 to 66%. Next slide, please. So food is information, food is powerful, food is medicine. Lifestyle medicine includes the power of food to manipulate disease processes and, in, and restore our health. The safest and most holistic method of prevention and recovery is through diet and lifestyle. Food is medicine. So I don't tell people to be any specific diet. I say, think about being a nutritarian. Think about the nutrients that you're putting in. Think about being whole food plant-based, whole food plant strong, whole food plant forward. Because we, we have learned over time that our genes are determined by the foods that turn them on and off. And so we look at that through epigenetics. We'll actually see in some slides today that we can increase telomere length by changing the foods that we eat, as well as improve longevity. Next slide, please. 
different types of diets, and we can talk more about these at length if we have time, but intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding, anti-inflammatory, cancer diets, interstitial cystitis, um, there's many, many, but really it all comes down to plant forward, plant strong. Next slide, please. Uh, I give my patients food lists. So think about when you give a person iron, when you give them calcium, when you give them potassium, magnesium, phosphate, is there a food that you can have them try to eat instead of giving them a food list? I have food lists for all of these. I'm happy to share them with you, um, as well as plant-based proteins and probiotics. Next slide, please. The Mediterranean diet through the studies actually is the strongest supported one at this point. I'm not 100% certain if that's because that's the one that has the most studies behind it, but we've actually seen that it reduces the risk of coronary heart disease by 52% and lowers the risk of stroke by 42%. Next slide, please. This is an example of an anti-inflammatory diet where we see that we should be doing eight to 10 servings of fruit and vegetables in our day. Going back to that daily dozen, remember, that I showed you in the beginning. So we can all agree that plant-based protein, go ahead, it's okay. Uh, plant-based protein can be obtained from all of these different things. We don't need meat for protein. I just want to make sure we're all clear. You will get a copy of these slides, so you will have them at your disposal. Um, Dr. Nakaishi has them, and as soon as the presentations are over, Today, she will send them out to you. Next slide, please. We've also seen with COVID, actually it strengthens your immune system by increasing the consumption of foods rich in vitamin A, vitamin C, zinc, quercetin, pre and probiotics. Uh, I will tell you, I had COVID coming out there and saying it. Uh, I would have never known I had COVID. I had a stuffy nose and I lost my sense of smell. Uh, never had a fever, never had any of the other things. Um, but I really do focus on my plate and focus on all of these different things. Do I think that that helped me? I have no idea, but I just felt like I wanted to share because as we're all going through physicians in a pandemic, um, you know, I do realize it's hard. I do realize we're putting our lives on the line and we have a lot of, you know, a lot of stress, but it is important that we're making sure we're getting our nutrients through foods. Next slide, please. Um, I also have, we're good right here, but I have a coronavirus survival guide that I put together that gives you the list of all the foods and the stress reduction types of things that you can do. So. It's the little things that you can begin to do daily. Again, you don't have to change everything. Just think about phytonutrients. Think about maybe adding a smoothie. Think about foods that you can get things out of. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Excuse me, here's a picture of the Canadian plate. They've, uh, you can see that half the plate is fruits and vegetables, a quarter of it is protein, and that is plant-based proteins, some of which we talked about. And if you are going to eat meat, maybe just making smaller portions of meat. Remember the old plate where there was a half, the plate was a steak, then a potato and corn? That was how I was raised. This is actually what the, the plate should look like, and then whole grains. Next slide, please. The American College of Lifestyle Medicine looks at it a little bit differently, takes it a step further. It is a half the plate fruits and vegetables, a quarter is all plant-based protein, and a quarter is whole grains. Next slide, please. Lots of evidence-based research out there showing that high intakes of total protein was associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality. Intake of plant protein was associated with a lower risk of all-cause um, and cardiovascular disease mortality. So we wanna replace foods that are high in animal protein really just with plant-based sources. And that could be associated also with longevity. Next slide, please. The ACL position paper actually, as incidence and prevalence of type 2 diabetes continues to rise, the current best evidence for multiple interventions and studies supports that remission achieved with intensive lifestyle modif modifications should become the preferred treatment and standard of care. Next slide, please. So I ask you, what is the state of your plate? You have three to five chances a day. You have choices. One thing I don't want to ever do is create a food addiction or food fear. So I really want you to make sure that you're doing this on a, um, a love yourself journey and you start to look at foods that you can put in based on nutrients and loving your body and not just eating and eating mindlessly. Next slide, please. With that, let's cook with Tess. This is Tess Monks. And she is not in her space. <laughs> I don't see her. Yeah. There she is. I had to, I had to cook okay. on my countertop here to turn this on. I'll mute myself and let her jump in. And if you want to highlight Tess, uh, you could put her on the speaker view. Hi, everyone. I'm going to put myself on my 
speak with you too, and I'll lose track myself. Um, hello, everyone. I'm so excited um, and honored to be asked by Michelle to uh, join you guys today. Um, the healthy foods that we promote here at Phipps are really in line with what all of you guys are learning about today. Um, we have this beautiful state-of-the-art um, teaching kitchen here at Phipps Conservatory. This is Botany Hall Kitchen. Uh, we're typically doing classes like this with all you guys here, um, and we definitely miss utilizing this space and having everybody here. Um, it feels a little silly to be in here talking to myself, right? Um, but I'm glad we could find another way to connect regardless. Uh, we've been using the Zoom platform um, on the back end with FIPS team to do all kinds of cuisines. Um, but today we're going to be focusing on the heart healthy plant based um, meals that that can be a regular staple in your um, in your diet. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, our first recipe is going to be the overnight oats. Um, I really hope some of you are already familiar with this and this isn't a surprise. Uh, but this is going to change. This is going to change everything for you. It's so easy, very customizable, super simple, um, and really cheap too. So what we're working with um, is a plant-based milk. You've got your almond milk, oat milk. You can use a little bit of whatever. Uh, we've got our our old-fashioned oats, um, and then the toppings kind of are are yours to yours to play with. So what you want to do is get yourself a mason jar, and this is going to make one portion, and we'll kind of explain more about that coming up. Um, so you're going to get your mason jar. Again, this is great for portioning things out. Put your oats in here. I'm in the kitchen, so I'm allowed to make a mess, right? And then we're going to put our milk in. Um, our recipe is calling for about half a cup. Um, I personally, I'm adding three-fourths of a cup. Um, just to cover, just to make sure that those oats are covered. Um, we're going to be leaving these overnight in our refrigerator. Um, so it's a great, you know, just line up your three glasses, fill them all up as you go. Um, at this point, you could even put your lid on there, throw it in the refrigerator, give it a little shake, and it's going to be ready first thing tomorrow. Um, but that's not very fun, so we have way more options to use. Uh, we've got um, a fruit that we're going to add in here. These are actually dried cherries. Um, so those are a perfect option. Add a little, you know, sweet and sour to your morning. Um, get you nice and woken up. Um, next, I've got almonds here. Um, just your regular almonds. All of these ingredients are really easy to find. Um, and we've even got some dark chocolate chips if that's your scene. Anything to get some more of those plant-based recipes into your diet. Um, so again, go ahead and throw the lid on these. Throw them in the refrigerator. Uh, I've got some more options for you guys as well. I prepped a little bit of this already. Um, so this first one here, we've got our oats, we've got our milk, um, we've got some strawberries, we can throw those in there. Um, we've got some walnuts. I always like to add a little crunch in something. So if you're looking for some kind of a formula, you're going to want your oats, your, um, your beverage or your liquid that's going to soak that up. You can even use water in a bind, um, but I, I really prefer the almond milk myself. Um, I've got these walnuts to add a little crunch. You've got your fruit in there already um, and a little bit of brown sugar for a sweetener. Um, you can add that in there. So there's your, your cinnamon strawberry one. You're just going to shake that up. Line, like I said, just line these up in your refrigerator um, and you're good to go for the week. Uh, this next lineup, I've got some blueberries, chia seeds, and blue agave. So again, your base, a fruit, a little crunch, and a sweetener. And then over here, we've got, um, this is the one I've been using regularly come fall season. We've got plenty of apples here in Pennsylvania at this time of year. Um, so again, we've got our base, got some apples we can add in here. Put just a dash of cinnamon if that's your thing. And we've got a little bit of maple syrup. So we've got this whole um, fall vibes going on. These are good all year round. You can do a little bit of everything with them. Um, get creative with it. Have fun. Like Michelle said, um, you really just dive into what you're doing. You want to really appreciate what you're eating and what you're putting into your body and thinking about, you know, what is the state of your plate and what does that look like once you're um, just about getting ready to eat. So again, you just flip the lids on all of these, throw them in the fridge. You've got breakfast all week long. Um, if you're a little pickier on your toppings, or maybe you can't commit to Wednesday's breakfast on Monday, like I said, go ahead and just leave it like this and add your toppings later. Um, see what, wait and see what you're in the mood for that morning. Um, if there's any questions, um, Michelle and your team, if you guys want to let me know. Um, but like I said, really simple recipe. You guys can easily do this at home. Get your kids involved. Sometimes it's always helpful to have your family involved. Um, 
and make sure you're not alone in your kitchen like we are here at Phipps. Um, so yeah, if there's, if there's any questions about that, let me know. Our um, recipe will be included in the email, I believe, if it's not already. Um, I'm gonna jump in. Please. Okay, so I just wanna kind of thank you, Tess. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. Um, Dana's gonna type some answers in the chat for you about mm -hmm. some books and recommendations as well as the carbohydrates. Um, I just usually, I wanna tell you what's always in my cupboard. I have the oats. I have also this muesli, which I love. My husband actually likes it quite a bit. It is um, a gluten-free tropical muesli that I just add my, um, my plant-based milk in. And I also have my chia seeds. So I just wanted to show you that. I prepped mine last night. So all I do is actually have, this is the chia seeds. And this could be even a chia pudding. And you just add fruits in. So whatever you feel like in the day. So I leave mine kind of um, naked. And then I add it based on how I feel. One is the muesli, one is the oats, and one is the chia. Um, I also have um, just the plant-based milk. I wanted to talk about there's options of ma uh, macadamia milk, soy milk, um, rice milk, and um, all, many different types. Oat milk, they, if you don't like one, keep trying. Uh, I don't usually put sweetener in my stuff, but I wanted to make sure that you know that you can use the agave and the honey and the maple syrup and the, um, the, the cane sugar if you want to. So important, something I don't wanna forget, prunes are great. So people come in with constipation all the time. They're really just not getting enough fiber. I saw Dr. Sierra write an, the recommendation on fiber fueled in the book. Really, people should be pooping without medicine. You know, it's amazing. If you give them the right foods, I have a constipation food list that you can actually just, um, you, you can add the, the foods in and then that gets them, that gets their bowels moving. So kiwi, pears, sometimes the other thing I wanted to mention is tea. So on a daily basis, I drink tea. So yogi makes a great tea, traditional medicinal makes a great tea. And so if you don't like to drink tea, you can use the liquid in your oats or your muesli or your chia to actually use the herb portion of like there's a smooth move tea that helps to get your bowels moving. Just a little tip and trick. Um, I do put uh, shredded coconut in mine. I put cacao nibs, lots of nuts. I have figs, dates. Um, and the next thing we're actually gonna do is, um, I'm, when we go back into the presentation, I'm gonna show you an easy way to add all these nutrients in at the end, but I'm gonna let uh, Tess show you the kale salad, um, and then we'll go to that at the end. Any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And I encourage you all to share your recipes too. I'm sure you've got ideas bubbling or maybe your go-tos for similar recipes. Um, so let us know in the chat what you think about um, what your fridge will look like this week once you have all of those in there. Um, the next we've got a really fresh kale salad, which I'm excited about. Um, kale seems to turn people off sometimes, um, but as long as you're using it um, and getting the most out of it, it's really, it's really great. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with just the kale here some of my other stuff out of the way. Um, with our kale, as you know, we've got these hardy stems. Um, and the easiest way, you don't need a knife, you don't need anything. You can, again, even have your kids jump in here with you. Um, but you're gonna go ahead and just strip it right off with your hands. Um, no need for anything fancy. You get that satisfying crunch noise. I don't know if that's coming through on the computer. Um, but you're gonna get all these torn up into little bits um, and ready to go. Kale can sometimes be bitter, or some people can find it as bitter. Um, and we're gonna teach you a couple ways to um, avoid that. So again, we're ripping these off our stems here, giving a nice little tear. I think I've got enough here. And once that's all in there, um, contrary to what we've all been told over and over again, um, we're actually gonna wash these. I haven't washed this yet. Um, so to get this, some of this bitterness out, um, we're just going to have it in our bowl and we're going to give it a nice little massage, right? We all deserve a massage, including the kale. Um, so this is really lets you allow it to break up a little. Um, it's going to be more digestible. It's going to, um, it's going to take flavors on a little bit better. Um, but as we kind of bruise the enzymes and break this all down, some of that bitterness is going to come out. Um, so this is where, contrary to popular belief, um, we're actually going to wait until after we've massaged this, broken it up a little bit, to give it the rinse. That's really going to get a lot of that bitterness out that people are so turned off by. Um, giving this a nice massage, you can already tell 
Um, maybe not quite so much through the video, but you'll have to trust me. You can already tell it's really breaking up really nicely. It's got a really great, nice color to it, and it smells great. So give this a try next time you're, um, you've got your kale in your recipe. Give it a little rinse here. As she's doing that, I just wanted to add in that a lot of times I use this recipe around the holidays because when I'm asked to bring something somewhere, I don't have anything to eat generally because everybody else is eating things that I won't choose to eat. So I always make, and, and people ask me to bring this kale salad. So I put my recommendations, put pomegranate because around this time of year when people are decorating in red and green, if that's your thing, then it's beautiful because it's the green, green kale with um, red pomegranate seeds all over the top of it. The other thing I wanna just add in while she's doing that is kale is what I consider to be the street sweeper of the colon. So if you think about, I buy the kale from the bag sometimes because that seems to be a bit easier than, um, than that way. So I, I do it both ways. I like it both ways. Right now I have regular kale in my refrigerator, but as the kale goes through your colon, it's actually brushing along the sides of the colon and kind of sweeping things and moving things through. So again, think about trying to get people's bowels to move. This is a great thing to add into your diet. So with that, back to you, Tim. Great. Um, so next we've got um, some beautiful, colorful, color is always really fun to implement in the kitchen um, fruits here. So we've got our lime, lemon, and orange. We're going to zest and juice all of these, add that straight to our kale. Then we've got our pomegranate seeds. Um, I've gone ahead so you didn't have to watch me butcher that um, and got those all ready to go already. Um, so what we're going to do is just give each of these a little zest. Here at Phipps, we've, we're pretty outfitted with a lot of great equipment in this kitchen. Um, so if you have a microplane zester, this is a great tool for this. Um, it has just these tiny grooves, similarly to a cheese grater, um, but a little, a little easier, a little softer on these skins. Um, so what you're gonna do is just drag that across. You're gonna wanna make sure you're getting just the end of that. You don't want any of the white piece. That's what's gonna be bitter. That's called the pith. Um, you're gonna get it stuck back in here a little bit. You can just bang that right out of there. If you don't have a microplane, no worries. This is still for you. Um, again, grab your grater, your regular cheese grater, choose your smallest side, and you're gonna go ahead and just do the same thing. Um, again, just making sure not to reach that uh, white section. You're just kind of adding this to taste. We're gonna add a little bit of each. So let me here. <clears throat> and so you don't have a cheese grater. Okay, still no worries at all. Um, another trick for this is um, a potato peeler. So you can go ahead and get your uh, potato peeler out. You can go ahead and just squeeze some of this skin off of there. Again, you're trying to get um, not quite as much of this white stuff. You're gonna to wanna to grab your paring knife and just get this right out of here. And like we said, plant-based um, eating can be intimidating. You know, we, like Michelle said, we've all grown up on a, the steak and potatoes and the, you know, all of this, all these heavy, heavy portions and heavy foods. Um, but it's, as long as you have your tried and true recipes, you're gonna be good to go. So with this, once you've got your peel, you've got a lot of that white out of there, um, you're gonna go ahead and just mince it right up. Um, again, this is if you don't have a zester. This is gonna give you a little bit more punching of a bite. It's not gonna break down quite as small as it within a microplane, but it's gonna work just as fine. It's still gonna give you that really bright flavor. Um, some quick knife skills for you. Uh, you always wanna hold your knife by the blade itself. That's gonna give you more control. Your other hand, you're gonna wrap your knuckles back. So. Uh, fingers are never part of a recipe, nor are fingernails. So you just want to make sure all that's out of the way. Keep that out from under your knife. Um, and then you're just going to do this rocking motion with your knife. Um, you'll see the end of this blade, this is just a standard chef's knife, um, is a little bit rounded, and that's what it's designed for. So we're just going to go over this, making it tiny, mincing it as small as we can. And again, if you've got your microplaner, you're ready to go. And we're just dicing this up almost as if you were making garlic or um, what's 
see what I mean, ginger, something you'd want um, a little bit smaller. Once you're at this small point, go ahead and put your hand on top of the knife. Again, we're just making sure it's not gonna be under the blade. And we're just gonna do the rock and chop and get this nice and, nice and tiny in there. Do you have any suggestions on how to get the pomegranate out uh, easily? Yes. Okay. Um, I certainly have had my kitchen look like a crime scene trying to get uh, pomegranate seeds out of the pomegranate. Uh, this is today's damage, um, just, for, just for reference. However, a trick that I really like is to put a little bit of water in the bottom of your bowl. Um, you're also going to, this is the end that you're going to cut your pomegranate um, just to get it started. So we'll go ahead and do a, a little demo here. Let me get a cutting board. Um, this is a question I get all the time. So I don't know if that was your question, Michelle, or if that came through the chat, but what a great question. Um, so we're just going to chop this top off here. You can see it's already starting to ooze out. Let me get my... That came through the chat. I also want to answer somebody who's a little confused with the kale recipe. You will use the kale, the zest of one lemon, one lime, one orange, and the juices of the lemon, the lime, the orange, and the hummus. That all goes into the kale and you massage it all together. If you still have a question, unmute yourself. That's okay too, if that's easier for you. Grab a clean bowl for you. So she said that it was, um, the picture is very small. If you hit speaker view in the top of your screen, it actually will make the person that's talking big is your entire screen. So I encourage you to hit speaker view and then you'll only see who's talking. Great. Um, so what I did so far was just cut these sections into the pomegranate so it's gonna kind of break apart um, like this. Now you can see we've already got the crime scene started down here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in my uh, bowl that has just a little bit of water in it. You'll see, um, can you get a, without spilling this onto my, into, onto my stove top here, um, just about halfway with water, give it a little rinse, and these are gonna be the best way that you can bust these seeds out. Again, it just falls apart really easily. I don't know how good of a visual you have on that, um, but you're just gonna kind of flip the skin outward and then just brush these seeds right off into your bowl. Um, the water isn't gonna dilute the flavor in any. This is what we did earlier. Um, so give this a try. If anybody has any other tricks, please let us know. Um, but this surely has been a lifesaver for me, um, both for cleanup and a time saver. That's the one that I use, actually. I find that that's helpful. My little nephew taught me if you cut it in half and you actually hold the pomegranate and you tap mm -hmm. it, that the seeds will come mm -hmm. out. I've never tried that one myself, but he said, Aunt Shell, you're not doing it the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> so I just want to say try that. Again, there's no science behind this. It's whatever seems to work for you. Somebody asked how much zest, it's to your liking. I love lots of zest. So I take that down to where it's completely white because the zest is what gives it a lot of flavor. There's also bioflavonoids in, um, in the outer rind. There's other nutrients in the outer rind too that we don't normally get. So um, you wanna just think about that. So this is very, you know, vitamin C, there's protein from the hummus. There's, you know, nutrients from the kale. So, and maybe I'll have Dana come on and talk about the nutritional value of what you guys are going to be eating after a test is done too. Great. Um, yeah, like Michelle said, to your taste, um, we've got just, um, I don't think I have all the kale that the recipe called for, so I'm going a little lighter on my zest. But again, taste as you go, where it's something we're always saying here at FIPS. Um, and a recipe is usually just a suggestion. So, um, if you find that you like one zest better than the other, or you like another kind of flavor to your to your dish, try some different things out. Um, now we got this orange as well. And this is coming together so beautifully. I know um, I'm not at the best angle to show you guys all this color, um, but you can see it really starting to come together, um, getting, getting nice colors in there. Uh, the kale is still breathing a little from its first massage. We're gonna go back in and incorporate all of this as well. I want to add too that um, I didn't put this, I don't think, on the recipe, but you can add nuts on top to add protein. I like cashews, I like sunflower seeds, I like uh, almond slivers, things like that are actually really, really good to add on the top. This is just like a base, so make it yours. Put some, you know, cutie little cutie oranges on there, 
Um, you can put any fruit on top, strawberries, you know, blueberries. I, my salads are always tons and tons of stuff. It looks, I mean, it's totally a meal. My salads are a meal and I usually take them everywhere I go. So, um, and if you look at my Instagram is MT Yogi doc, M T Y O G I D O C half of its food pictures, <laughs> because I like to just make my food for me. I did the uh, Ruby culinary um, class. It's my, it's my kind of meditation and fun. I, I like to make it beautiful. It's my art. So I have fun with it and try to make it pretty and, and think about that when I'm doing it as well. Um, we're offering other classes through FIPS as well, um, similar setup to this. And that's something that, um, you know, we're always, we're always talking about getting color in your diet. Um, and especially right now, making something look really presentable, something that you really is going to make your mouth water. We're not able to get to restaurants as much as usual. So make your, make your plate restaurant worthy, you know, add that extra flair, um, whether it's just your, your presentation or that extra step. Sometimes it can really make a big difference. Um, like Michelle, Michelle said, we're also going to add some juice into this. Um, again, here at Phipps, we have this nice juicer. Um, I just went ahead and cut the lemon in half, put it in there, give it a nice squeeze. And this is smelling so good. Uh, one day when we have smell-o-vision, we're going to have to redo this for you all. Uh, but this is coming together really great so far. Um, again, for anybody who doesn't have the fancy tools at home, you are not excluded from this recipe. Um, this is one of my favorite tricks. The tongs are my favorite kitchen tool, um, and they come in hand, handy for this too. So we've got our lemon. You don't have your, um, your fancy lemon juicer. We're just going to throw this right in between your two sides of your tongs, flip it over, and it's going to give you the same effect. Just going to throw some juice in there. We're going to do the same thing with the orange. Cut in half. This one is likely even too big for the zester or the juicer, I'm sorry. So we'll go ahead and use the tongs again. Um, as a 5-2 uh, chef, I also like to use the tongs to reach anything off the top shelf. Um, so there's another tip for you as well. <laughs> so we've got all this juice in here. We're gonna go ahead and give it a nice massage again. Um, this is smelling so good. Uh, like Michelle said, this is gonna be great for Christmas or passing dishes around. Um, it's really coming together and then um, adding these pomegranate seeds in is going to give it so much beautiful color. Today I've got some. You got the wax on the lemons, limes, and oranges, and I'm going to let you test or Dana. Um, the chat is going to be open all day. We're not closing this room, and so you can take a, a copy of the chat. I know people are asking because there's a lot of really valuable information in the chat. So you, you can either take pictures with your phone or you can you know, download a copy of the chat. And this is going to be recorded, so you'll be able to revisit this and watch this again if you would like. Uh, somebody else had asked a question. Oh, oh, I see. They put um, a link for recipes. I have my stuff under the Epic is MT, um, and I'm happy to share anything I have. I have a whole pages. I think Dr. Nakaishi has it, uh, MT resources. And I give pages and pages of resources and recipes and things like that to my patients. So are we good? Um, can you answer the question about the wax on the lemon, lime, orange, or whatever that question was? Um, I didn't see the question specifically, but um, if you're worried about that waxy kind of film on the on the outside of your oranges, your any of your citrus fruits, um, just go ahead and give them a, a rinse, and you're going to want to do it in warm water um, and use some vinegar. That's going to break down those oils. That's going to clean the surfaces. Um, the CDC recommendations for cleaning produce actually haven't changed. Um, again, kind of contrary to some some um, questions that I've gotten before, um, you know, we're still washing everything just as we did. Uh, we're still storing things just as we did. Food temperature, temperature safety, none of those things have changed. Um, so you're only more so being cog cognizant of those since the since the COVID um, COVID epidemic has come around. So um, I added some pepita seeds in here as well, which are going to go great. Um, again, just adding some beautiful color in there. We've got our hummus. I'm just throw a spoonful of that. And then give this another good mix. And this really comes together beautifully. Um, again, I can't tell, I can't speak enough about having 
nice bright colors in a recipe. This smells so good. I wish you guys were all here to try it with me. I'm gonna grab a bowl here. And again, this is something else that you can make ahead of time, make for, make for later. Um, everyone's familiar, I'm sure, with the recipes that are better the next day or maybe the next two days. This is one of those. It um, it's just gonna soak up those flavors even more, especially after massaging the kale and breaking some of that down. And you have this for the whole week, however, however long you've prepped for. <laughs> um, and we all know how important that is and how important that is to your patients as well. So just some easy recipes to share with you. I'm not sure if there's any other questions, Michelle, or anything else we'd like to, like to talk about. Bravo, bravo, Tess. I just want to add that actually tonight we have a Cooking for Health for the physicians. We have a program that we designed, Cooking for Health and Physician Wellness, that is uh, you're able to sign up for if you're a UPMC physician. And it is free to you. It mixes cooking and physician wellness, and it is virtual. And we're breaking up it apart by region. So if you want to go to FIPS website and look, if you just put, put Cooking for Health Michelle Thompson, it will pull that up and you can sign up for that. If you don't have to sign up by your region, you could cho choose any. I want to add that you can put, Sarah, if you can put the slides back up, please. Uh, if you want to take this kale and bake it, it makes amazing kale chips. So I just want to throw that in there as well. So if you don't like it that way, you can bake it. And this is my masala daba tray. This is what I wanted to show you. I was trying to think of ways that I could get the um, nutrients in in a fast way. You're not going to go to the cupboard and get out, you know, 14 different uh, things. So <laughs> what you do is, is you get one of these little masala daba trays. If somebody could write that in the chat, M-A-S-A-L-A-D-A-B-B-A. It's kind of my creation of, used, uh, usually in Indian dishes, they have this for their spices. I was thinking, what the heck can I put in here so that I can add this beautiful stuff into my food? So in here, you can see there's coconut chips, there's um, unsweetened coconut, there's almond slivers, pepita, sunflower seed, nutritional yeast, which is a great cheese substitute, also high in vitamin B. Um, there's paprika, chia seeds, flax seed, uh, hemp hearts, sunflower seeds, goji berries, cacao nibs, and sometimes, I have a list of also what I put in there. So if you email me, it's, um, or if you're on Epic, it's just, just dot MT masala daba, and it pops into your note, and I give that to my patients. Next slide, please. And that's just typical. I put it on my salads. I put it on my soups. I put it in my stir fries. I just add it in so that I'm getting a variety of phytonutrients, phyto, you know, like all the different nutrition in as much as I can, as quick as I can, because I'm busy. Next slide, please. So some different challenges. UC Davis has a 21 day challenge. There's a go plant-based for seven days, heart healthy challenge. No more what's for dinner. Um, a smarter grocery list, save time and money, get a jump start on the weekend, forks over knives. Uh, has a heart healthy challenge as well as um, Lori Maribus. Next slide, please. There's some resources, Dr. Lori Maribus there. Dr. Mark Hyman has a great podcast, Doctor's Pharmacy, F-A-R-M-A-C-Y. Next slide. Aviva Ram, Natural MD Radio, the Center for Mind Body Medicine. Um, the YouTube channel actually is, is great. There's lots of things on there. And then my website, Be Well Therapy, Shop with a Doc. I have a mindful eating podcast that I'm not sure has made it to the website yet, but if you need it and would like it, it I'd be happy to send it to you. I did that uh, along with Decoding Obesity, which is a uh, uh, obesity medicine specialist that has a podcast out. So our Be, our Be Well Therapy's YouTube channel is great. Lots of stuff on the microbiome that we're not really going to dig into today, but lots of stuff out there. Next slide, please. International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention is an amazing journal that actually is put out by the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Um, let's see. There's also the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine has a resource guide. There is an app actually that you can get for your phone that is called um, the Clinician's Guide for, um, let's see, I have it out of mind. We were just talking about this this morning. It is the nutrition guide for the clinician. And then the Ruby Culinary School was the culinary school that I went through. And I did the one that did, it was the Forks Over Knives culinary program because it teaches you to cook without oil. And it, it is a whole food plant-based, no oil, sugar, or salt. Next slide. Just some more literature. You're going to have this. We're two minutes over, so I don't want to keep you. And we've seen that a lot of... Um, changing the diets can actually prevent dementia. So 
that's something that we don't really have meds to even help. So this changing your diet is very valuable to prevent that, prevent disease. Next slide. We've also seen in coronavirus that people that do better have better healthy habits. Next slide, please. Um, the Plant Nutrition Project, I don't wanna to forget to tell you that there, there is an adult and pediatric as well as Spanish virgin, version of the um, Plant Nutrition Project teaches um, for adults and peds, uh, all whole food plant-based nutrition. Uh, Forks Over Knives movie, Code Blue movie, Game Changers movie, Meditate Your Weight is a great book. It's a 21 day challenge that helps you dig into your emotional eating. And also um, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention. Next slide. My information, you could reach me online um, through Be Well Therapies, through UPMC, through my personal email, through my Facebook page, through my Instagram. So with that, I think we're going to open up to questions, but those of you who want to take a break, um, this is just the FIPS program coming up for cooking, the Annual Physician Wellbeing Symposium, January 22nd is, is coming up, as well as don't forget to fill out your Physician Wellbeing Survey. A lot of the, the survey information is what's helped us to do these programs that are free for you now. There are eight, I think eight or nine Cooking for Health and Physician Wellness programs. So please use your, um, the ability to speak in, with your voice in the survey. Next slide. And just ways that you could reach me. Next slide. And that's it. So let's see. Any questions in the chat we didn't get to? Um, tonight's session, I do believe, is full unless you're already signed up. Tess can answer to that. Um, more about the nutrition and COVID outcome. Yeah, the American Journal of Family Medicine actually just did a, um, I'm not sure how many of you have seen that journal came out, but they had a lot of articles that are in there about uncontrolled sleep apnea actually worsens your outcome of COVID. Um, obesity, we've known that from the very beginning, worsens your outcome of COVID. Um, a re, um, not a diverse microbiome, so uh, microbiome dysbiosis. So those people who have a, poor nutritional profile actually do poorly with COVID. Um, anything else as a region of physicians? I'm not sure that I understand. Altoona is not listed. You know, if you email FIPS, please, like it, all regions should be listed. And if it's not listed, we'll make sure that it really should be listed. Unless you were in the last region because we just did one two weeks ago and that could have been your region, but you're welcome to jump into any region. And that is with me and Tess and my dietitian that will be hosting that. And we'd be happy to have you. I mean, the more the merrier. I, I don't know where, what we feel about tonight, Tess, if we could add somebody in, but we can talk about that. It's a virtual platform. So, I mean, I think it's fine, right? Yeah, um, and I just went ahead and sent my email in the chat. So if anybody does have more questions, whether that's for tonight or later on, um, go ahead and just save my email. You'll find that on the website too. Um, we are pretty full for tonight, and um, we're doing a few recipes. So if you were to um, if you were to jump in with us, uh, you may not have the time to get all the groceries to cook along. However, you're of course more than welcome to use later on on your own. Yes. Thank you all very much as well. Uh, you know, Tess is going to sign off and she'll be with me again tonight. And um, dietitian Dana will be with me and Dr. Sierra will still be with me. Uh, we're going to also have uh, an integrative physical therapist, yoga, tai chi, and um, instructor who's going to be joining us in a little bit. We have mindful eating that's coming up. We have mind body medicine that's coming up. There's a lot of sound therapy actually. Um, I actually see Grozik, who is the director of the new upcoming documentary, Going Ohm. She just <laughs> unmuted herself. Uh, if you want to take a look at her, I'm so happy that she signed in here. So we have some exciting things actually coming up. So I think we have a break right now. Any questions? <laughs>